All right. What's up, everybody? What's happening? Going on. <laughs> Man, listen, this 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 meeting right here, this live right here has been rescheduled like five times. At least five. Uh, at least five. <laughs> but listen, it's going to be real and we're going to have a great time. Let me just say this on the front of this discussion. Everybody needs somebody's in your life that you can text at any given moment and just pick up where the last conversation left off. You ain't got to do a whole lot of posturing. You can send screenshots of stuff that's just crazy and dramatic <laughs> and like out of sorts. Uh, right. you, you ain't got to apologize for saying crazy stuff. You can nerd out and then you can get ratchet if you have to. You can go mm -hmm. academic and then you can go hood if you have to and everything in between. And John C. Richards Jr. is one of them people in my life. <laughs> Pastor Christopher, we are coach, we are bilingual in that way. We, can we, go we have way. to be multilingual. <laughs> and ain't nobody ain't nobody throwing shade at you today for having your Howard uh, shirt on. I'm, I'm I see subliminal. I know you well enough to know subliminal messages. Listen, you know I had to throw the subliminal out there, man. I said I'm getting on with him. I gotta wear the Howard gear. It was going to either be Howard or Morehouse. You know what I'm saying? I doubled up. You know what I mean? Oh, humble so. brag. Humble brag. <laughs> humble brag. So seriously, everybody, uh, this is a this is a, a, a fun discussion, but serious uh, in that mm -hmm. we're going to we want to talk about learning a little bit in the sense of um, how to approach this in some healthy ways. And for some of you that are watching this, you may want to go back and listen to the live, um, take some notes because we're going to. Give you try to make make some very practical points here with you as well. Um, we'll we'll answer some questions. So those of you that are listening in today, if you got questions that you want to uh, glean, uh, then mm -hmm. feel free. We'll be we'll be looking at the comments here as well uh, to 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 really generate some discussion around what we're talking about. And as we talk about this learning plan today, I think it's going to be really really healthy for you. So by way of formal introduction, um, Pastor John is the uh discipleship community learning pastor uh i just gave you a whole bunch of new titles yeah a lot of them but the official title is connections pastor yes okay there you go the connections <laughs> pastor um in little rock arkansas uh where where pastor philip corner is the the lead pastor senior pastor uh john is a uh and i say this to him all the time i think he really thinks i'm joking and just you know talking but uh, I, he's one of the most brilliant people I know. Um, we Saturday, you know, Saturday or I can't remember when, but I text him a question. I was like, man, talk to me because he is he is a pastor, a preacher, but he's also an academic and a legal mind. He went to law school and um, just just a great guy. And uh, we can talk really scholarly when we have to, but then talk husband talk and parent talk and family talk, street talk, justice talk, everything in between. So, brother, mm -hmm. publicly, I'm going to say, man, I really, really appreciate you and appreciate your friendship. And uh, I love you dearly, man. Uh, so he, he's going to be able to break break some stuff down for us today. And of course, those of you that don't know who I am, I don't want to make any assumptions there. Uh, I'm the executive pastor at Crossover Church in Tampa, Florida, um, and uh, the founder and CEO for DiverseChurchJobs.com. Uh, but both of us are very passionate about seeing the local church as healthy as it can be very passionate about seeing people as healthy as they can be. And so some of the discussion, a lot of the discussion today, most of the discussion today is going to be centered around uh, one particular area of folks being healthy. Pastor John, anything you want to add to that introduction at all, brother, before we jump in? Man, I just want to say that you might have sold yourself short because I, I think you got at least 15 jobs and you just only highlighted two of them. But that's OK. We're going to leave it. We're going to leave that be. But ever since I've come across you, man, you've been you've just been someone who's uh, who's I've been able to to bounce ideas off of and kind of connect with. And I feel like we got that kindred spirit like that, man. So every time we're able to connect, man, I'm I'm grateful for being able to do that. So appreciate you, brother. Absolutely, man. So so when we talk about a learning plan, y'all, a part of a part of this is this. Uh, we we are we believe that Sunday is not enough. Mm -hmm. We believe that Sunday is not enough, that if, in fact, you are going to be all that you're supposed to be as a believer, 
you have to have a commitment beyond making Sunday your main course. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Sunday really, in, in all intents and purposes, it may be the pep rally. It may be the appetizer. It's the starting point. And mm-hmm. so, Pastor John, unpack that a little bit in terms of sort of where our culture is today and why maybe why, why do people settle for just Sunday? Like, why is that a reality for us today? Man, so we have 168 hours in a week. Mm. And many folks believe that one hour on Sunday is enough to be able to um, fulfill their spiritual development quota for the week. Mm. And it's, it's just strange to me that they don't apply that to every, any other area in their lives. Mm. Uh, they spend a whole lot more time on other matters in their lives. And that one hour seems to fulfill the quota. Well, if we are to believe that we are spiritual beings and that we are created for God and for his glory, then um, the question becomes for us as leaders, right, is, is have we as leaders and has the church uh, failed these people by expecting less of them than we actually should? Um, if our expectations are low, then absolutely, they're going to just show up on Sunday. Uh, But if you have a discipleship model where you increase your expectation of the folks who are attending your churches, then you're going to see that they are going to move out of that Sunday and maybe Sunday, Wednesday mentality and Mm. move towards a full week mentality in terms of their spiritual growth and development. So that's one of the things that we're developing and have developed at our church. And I think that other churches are thinking through this too, man, because we're in a whole pandemic and there are some churches that are not meeting anymore. Right. And wow. I was watching uh, the Carrie Newhoff podcast the other day and uh, he had Nona Jones on and, you know, she's kind of the, the digital church whisperer right now. So uh, she was looking at some statistical data that said that many churches are not going to see uh, 80% of their people come back. Uh, plus, which is scary for some people, right? But if you have a discipleship strategy that includes digital, then it could not be scary uh, if you are very intentional about developing your people the full week. So, so yeah, that's that's where we are, man. What about y'all? What, how are y'all approaching approaching this whole thing, man? Yeah, so you know we're in a, we're in a little bit of a different context <clears throat> than you guys are in mm-hmm. the sense that. You know, our target audience, we're in a multi-ethnic, multi-class, multi-generational situation. So uh, we have to be very very intentional. And and this is not to suggest that that other churches don't have to be intentional, but we've got a wide audience that we're reaching and that is a target audience for us. So, for example, we we do small groups, right? But small Mm -hmm. groups have to look different for us. Uh, We don't have small groups in people's homes, um, you know, and even the curriculum. uh, And I'll just I'll even say this on the front end of this. Um, and some people may take offense to this, but this is the truth of the reality. And, and you, you will get this immediately, you know, by and large, the majority of the curriculums that can be purchased out there, we can't use at our church. Uh, it doesn't look like people that look like us, the people that we're serving, mm-hmm. they're not using stories, illustrations, examples, connecting points that connect with our people. Um, the language is, it's, it's like, yeah. Bro, it's, it's, I mean, and you'll get again. This is stuff that you and I have in common. We talk about this all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's like when you when you when you take the SAT, you take these entrance exams. There's a yeah. cultural disconnect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally, man. <laughs> so listen, if I have to stop an illustration that I see in a Bible study guide and explain who the Beatles or the Eagles are to my people, then it ain't gonna help us. It ain't gonna help us, man. It really ain't. Like, I don't need to explain. Like, any good speaker knows that you have to be able to speak to your context, right? So, if you're leading a Bible study and they got some references in there that nobody knows, then that just destroys the whole thing, man. And that's yeah. that's the that's the dilemma we have, right? As people of color who use majority white resources, you're gonna you're gonna have that crop up quite often, actually. Man, I was preaching a couple months ago at our church, and uh, during one of our more full services, I asked just up, just by a show of hands, how many of y'all go white water rafting? 
three people raised their hand, man. Oh, really? Three people. Okay. Okay. Three. No, they, none they of them look go, like. They must go together. <laughs> none of them look like you and I. I'll say that. Yeah. Right. 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 So, so anyways, so. So I think that the, the goal, though, is is for us to create resources and opportunities for that to happen. So we actually also created what we call. So our mission as a church is is under the banner of 3D, uh, discover, develop, display. So we empower people to discover, develop and display Jesus Christ in every area of their lives. So we we then pivoted from that from a creative standpoint and have mm-hmm. what we call HD classes where we mm-hmm. actually hold those classes on Sundays during worship so you can come to your service and worship and then after that come to an hd class that goes a little bit deeper on a particular topic right Mm -hmm. um we earlier before we went live we were talking about um how to study the bible or how Mm -hmm. to pray or uh, apologetics right those kinds of things so we have the hd classes we do have a midweek bible study uh that Mm -hmm. we do and uh that's really fun like right now, we're going through the book of Acts. Uh, we just finished mm-hmm. a series uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm forgetting the title of that series now, but basically do it differently is what we I think what we titled that series. Uh, sure. So those are, those are like Christian living, uh, some apologetics, some uh, books of the Bible series that we do. But we're trying to offer basically different kinds of things on the buffet to reach different mm-hmm. people where they are. We're actually in the process of updating our podcast studio uh, because mm. we'll do some lives there. And uh, again, man, it's like we're we're trying to learn. We're trying to learn yeah. in this season. And I, I think I think every church should take the posture of learning and experimenting versus mandates and experts. Listen, if you got somebody that told you they got this thing figured out, I'll tell them that they are lying and the truth ain't in them. All day, like, all day during the, every day during the week, and <laughs> twice on Sunday. Yeah, we we're doing the same thing, man. So we have a we have a school of ministry, something similar to the HD classes that walks people through different tracks. So we have an apologetics track, we have a biblical studies track, uh, we have a track now on uh, the Black Church and social justice that we uh, just launched. So these are tracks that we do on Monday nights, uh, as opposed to Sunday after services. And now we're, we're offering those uh, digitally and also on demand. So yeah. we're kind of we're kind of shifting a little bit uh, in terms of uh, being in person for these classes. And what we've seen is, man, our enrollment and participation has skyrocketed. Wow. By taking them on demand and taking them class those classes online. We've also done that. We're uh, historically black church. We've also done that with our Sunday school classes mm. and our Sunday school attendance has gone up as well. So okay. so even though our in-person brick and mortar attendance uh, has not quite. Um, well, we're not meeting in person now, but when we came back for a hot minute, it didn't come up to the level that it was pre. Uh, what we're seeing is through some of our online programming is that our attendance and participation is going up across the board, uh, whether it be discipleship, whether it be outreach and other matters. Uh, we, we're seeing we're seeing folks participate and which necessitated for us the launch of an online campus. Yeah. So we, we actually launched an online campus the beginning of this year, okay. uh, which we don't we don't see very much in our in the black church space. Uh, nope. I know your church is more multicultural, but in terms of black churches, we were kind of looking at different models. And I'm like, man, just like resources that we were talking about, right? Uh, you're not going to see very many online campuses for black churches, but we felt like this was one of the things that we we needed to do and had to do. So let me let me pause just for a second, John, and say for those of you that are listening in, uh, when he says online campus, that is not the same thing as you streaming your services. No. Okay. Those are two, no. Totally, two totally different <laughs> things. And he and I will have to come on here at another time and mm-hmm. have that discussion. But, yeah. but for the record, for those of you that are listening in or may listen to this later, um, having an online campus is not the same thing 
as you streaming your Sunday experience um, or even mm. your Wednesday night experience for that matter. So mm -hmm. let, let's, yeah. let's, let's talk about this, Pastor John. So um, at the end of uh, at least the last two years or maybe even three, I know for sure the last two years, you and I mm -hmm. exchanged text messages and we start talking about, okay, man, what books you reading for next year? And mm -hmm. take some screenshots of our Kindle and, and other books that we, <laughs> we put on and all of that. And so right. at the end of last year, we were like, man, we need to expose this to people uh, for mm -hmm. other people to benefit from this kind of logic and thought process as well. So let's walk everybody mm -hmm. through that process a little bit from a learning standpoint, because if you're not intentional about your learning, then you don't really have a plan and you're going to be yeah. all over the place. And yeah. uh, I mean, there's so much we can say to that. So let's talk about right. that. Before. Yeah, I, I think every Christian needs to be a lifetime learner, right? Um, yeah. I, I, I cringe when people feel like they have arrived in their learning. Um, yeah. And this isn't just for academy nerds and people that just love school like us, right? Um, I think that every believer needs to take a posture of learning because yeah. you never exhaust your understanding of God and who he is, right? Yeah. So, so for, for me, that posture means that I'm always reading and yeah. always reading intentionally. I think the problem that most people have, and Chris, Pastor Christopher, you know this, is that people always have these random goals that never never have any specificity to them, right? Yep. Uh, we know about the SMART goals format. And and they generally say, hey, I want to do this more. Okay, what does that actually mean? So I always push people when they tell me they want to do something more, I'm like, what's your plan? What's yeah. your strategy? How yeah. are you going to go about doing that? Have you already taken the first step in doing that? And a lot of people don't go about doing that. And that's why a lot of their plans fail, especially when it comes to reading. Yeah. Because re reading has to be an intentional act. Look, we don't got all these books behind us because we're not readers. Like <laughs> we, we have some intentionality around, around how we read and what we do to read. And we can get in that a little bit if you want to, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, because I think people leave they leave their learning to happenstance and they are more mm -hmm. reactionary um, you know, to that. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. know, I mean, I literally, I literally encounter people who say, I don't read, I don't need to read. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. right. Um, you know, so like even like let's let's nerd out for just a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. So from a historical standpoint. Uh, we know that we started out as an agricultural society. Mm -hmm. We then went from agricultural to uh, factory and industrial revolution. From industrial, yep. we then went to uh, computer and tech. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From computer and tech, we then moved to information. And so right now, most sociologists say that we are in the information age. Yep. And so when you think about that, in the future the vast majority of jobs and work will be jobs and work that are centered around your learning and your mind. Mm -hmm. So if a yep. person doesn't have the discipline of learning new information, and I, I, I man, I read this, this powerful quote, and I don't want to misquote it. It's somewhere on my social media. So if somebody follows me, you could probably scroll back early long <laughs> enough to see it. But man, this guy said, I wish I could quote his name now because I don't want to plagiarize. But again, mm -hmm. I, it's, on, it's on my social media. He said, the winners of tomorrow will be people who have the skill of learning, unlearning, and relearning. That's good. That's good. Ah, yeah. oh, man. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, th I think we're in the age of, not, like you said, the knowledge worker. And if you don't have knowledge, then you might not be a worker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have to be able to um, to be able to read, retain, and also use the knowledge that you like. I'm not reading just to be reading. Wait a minute, time out, time out. You're a black preacher. You just disappointed me because I was waiting for a third no, R. I cannot. I didn't. I, I couldn't find it, so I had to go with the. I had to go with the most basic word. <laughs> I was. You knew exactly what I was getting ready to say. I, I was going to say regurgitate, but that just sounds like it sounds weird. I'm like, no, nah, we're not going to go with regurgitate. <laughs> so <laughs> read, <because> it's <laughs> read, retain, 
I'm lost. I don't have it. <laughs> See, I told you it wasn't that easy, right? <laughs> Use that to sirens, brother. Listen, you know we we know we gotta have that alliteration. But but read, I mean, read retain, and reason. I like that. I like that. We'll we'll go there. Read, retain, and reason. Um, but that's that's part of the reason why I am a consistent reader, and both of us have different approaches, at least this year to reading. Yeah. Um, my gen my general approach is I, I put together a whole list and read a book every week. And I discipline myself to be able to do that. Now you're in a, and this is going to be a seasonal thing, right? Because I'm in a season of my, my life where I'm not in uh, academic programming, but you are. Yeah. So, so you're approaching your reading habit a little bit differently than I am, but we're both having the reading discipline happen in our lives, right? Yeah. So it so, doesn't look the same for everybody. Yeah. So let's talk about it. Let's talk very specific details sure. uh, because the goal for today is to challenge people to think through whatever their plan is, to be intentional about whatever their plan is. So. All right. When you so when you get to December, you're thinking about the new year. How do you mm -hmm. approach your learning plan? Just just in terms of the books that you're going to read. Yeah. So when I get to December, I go to the various publishers that I know and respect. And I go and look at the books that they're going to have come out in 2022. And I look at the list. I read the summaries. I see which ones seem intriguing to me. And then I also make sure they fall, fall under the categories in which I will read. Pastor Christopher, yep. I will admit to you, I do not read fiction books. Me either. <laughs> hey, I, have, one of my I friends, don't have time to read fiction books. I know, man. One of my friends is like, on me all the time. He writes uh, fiction and he's a, he's a Christian writer. And he's like, man, why don't you read fiction books? I'm like, bro, I don't have time to read fiction books. So uh, that's, that's one of the things I will admit and confess. So if you're a fiction reader out there, God bless you, but I'm going to be in the nonfiction space. And I have general categories in which I read every single year. So I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be leadership. I'm going to be marriage and family. I'm going to be theology. I'm going to be social justice and social causes and social issues. Um, I am going to read in the area of finances. Uh, I'm going to read in the area of homiletics and preaching. So the things that are part of my life every single day where I want to grow and develop in, those are the key areas that I'm going to read books in because I have to be intentional about reading the books that I have to and want to read. There's so many books out there, bro. Yeah, man. Millions of books. Yeah. And if I tried to read every book that came across my desk, which is a problem for me, um, I would not. Come on, uh, tell the truth and say the devil. <laughs> Amazon loves me because I just, I pop on Amazon and buy a book in like five minutes without nothing, no second thought. But when I have a list, I'm able to stick to what I decide I'm going to read and give myself a wiggle room. So at the end of December, I put that list together. I actually write 40 books on that list and give myself 12 to grow. So I had 12 books where I can add here or there throughout the course of the year if I come across a book that I want to add to the list so I can get to that 52 total. So I'm going to read one book every week. And let me tell you about reading and how I read. So I read. So, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Before oh, you do ahead. that, before you do yeah. that. All right. So let's just be honest. Let's just be honest with people. So, do you actually get to fifty-two every year? Yes. How how many years have you read fifty-two books a year? Eight. Eight straight. Yeah. Okay. And did you just like the first year you nailed it out, or did it take you a process to get to that point? Man, I am an Enneagram one. So if I commit to doing something, it's going to be done. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, just so, how, so, that's just how I'm wired. All right. So, all right. The first year, though, when you all were right. rolling up on November, before Dece yep. November, December hit, hit you mm -hmm. you were already in the 40s. You are, are, are close, to, close to your 52. Or did you have to cram November, December? I was at 48 at the end of November which means four weeks in December, I got 52. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you read, so you read one book a week, and most of these books 
um, are like 150, 200 pages a, a year. I mean, yeah, book? about two, 220, 230 is probably around the average. And are these heavily academic books or are they pretty straightforward, like in terms of leadership and all of that? Yeah, some of them are academic and then most of them are kind of like layperson Christian uh, easy reads too. So um, so I'm going both. I'm going both because some of the academic ones take a little bit longer. Take a little okay. bit longer. So Kendrick Roberts um, asks, do either of you have books that you read on repeat from year to year? If so, which one? Uh, I I don't read one on repeat year to year, but I do add older ones that I've read to my list if I want to revisit those. Um, so one of those. So oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. One of those is uh, Niebuhr's Christ and Culture, which is a timeless book. Love that book. I I revisit that um, certainly every three to four years because I want to make sure that. Um, I'm engaging culture in ways that he lays out in that book, and I love the way he writes. So that's one of the yeah. books, one of several books that I use, I, re, I revisit from time to time. Yeah, I, I uh, the celebration of discipline is one that that comes mm -hmm. up regularly, um, and that's a book that I would totally recommend that people uh, grab a hold of. Um, and I know that you are a John Maxwell guy, so there are some John Maxwell books that just. Like I, I'll I'll pull them suckers back up in a minute and be like, OK, yeah, I need to revisit this for a moment. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, I do, I do a morning prayer call every morning on Clubhouse. And right now we're actually going through the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership as our time of devotion. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've read that book. Right. But it's it's mm -hmm. one of those ones that's timeless. John Maxwell's books are generally timeless and very quick, pithy statements that you can grab a hold of. Uh, mm -hmm. There's probably a, there's probably a few other books. Uh, there's probably a few other books that I grab a hold of pretty pretty well, but those are two two mm -hmm. immediate ones that come to mind. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I'm a I'm a big servant leadership guy. That is uh, that is sweet spot for me, and I think that that any leadership model should be servant leadership. So any book that is in that space, uh, one of my favorites is Scott Saul's From Weakness mm -hmm. to Strength. Um, it's an amazing book. And then uh, the father of servant leadership is Robert Greenlee. So uh, he kind of has the classic works on so, social um, on servant leadership. So I revisit his his original work. I like original sources. So I go back to, to Greenlee from time to time and uh, go back. And he, you know, he he creates the model based on obviously Jesus's model, but does it in a way that uh, ha handles it from a sociological perspective as well. So. Um, Greenleaf is is one of my guys too, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I think I think you know what I found is I mean when a book is timeless, it's timeless, and it's good. Mm -hmm. you, know, you you can tell that pretty quickly when you read through it. So, Pastor John, very practically, are there some books that you identify that you're going to read? You get through the first chapter or the second chapter, and you're like, ah, uh, nope, I ain't feeling this anymore. Yep. Yep. I, I I got this advice one year from one of my professors um, as I was working through the program. He was like, why would you torture yourself with a book that doesn't bring any value? Yeah. And I said, and, and that for me, for someone who loves to start stuff and finish stuff, like I don't like to read, like leave stuff unfinished. That was tough, tough for me yeah. because I wanted to finish the book. Like, this is my goal. I'm going to finish this book. That's that but Enneagram 1 coming out. There it is, man. But once I get to chapter 2 or 3 and it's just not anything there of substance or value, then I'm not going to continue. You know what um, You know what John Piper said? And I don't quote Piper often. But ah, John Piper said, <laughs> I was listening. I was listening. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. John Piper said that he only retains about 5% of every book that even though he reads the entire book, but there are like three to four quotes that stick with him the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. And I have that same approach. Like, I'm not going to, you're not going to remember everything that an author said. But if you can pull two to three things that are going to help you in your life and throughout your life, man, th that was worth the read in and of itself. So yeah. I'm not someone that's trying to memorize all 12 chapters in a book and let you know what's in each chapter. I'm going to tell you seven or eight takeaways that I have, and I do this regularly, 
um, to show you and demonstrate to you, here's what I got from this particular book. And here's what I'm carrying with me in my filing cabinet, my digital filing cabinet, just in case I need to go and pull on it. And and y'all, he's 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 being very candid, uh, honest about this too, because if you follow him on Facebook, he actually will give you like some social media uh, tiles that gives you a summary and a couple quotes from each of the books that he's reading each week. So that's that's really good. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. What's funny is, Pastor John, one of my mentors, um, I was on a Zoom call with him last week, and he literally said to me, and this is a guy who, and I don't want to say his name, but he he is he's very well respected in his space. Uh, mm. He's a uh, he is an expert in his space and mm. has been doing it for thirty years. And he said to me, he's like, man, I'm at a place in my life. I look at the table of contents. I find the chapters that I am passionate or committed about <laughs> for right now. I read those chapters. I highlight those, make a few notes, and then I put the book down. Mm. I was like, oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, man. That is crazy. Yeah. So I I, I got a, uh, so my system helps me to make it through the book um, in a way that I think may be helpful for other folks. So I actually have the uh, hardback and or digital copy of the book and also the audio book of many of my books. So uh, Kindle has like a matchmaker program where you're able to buy the audio book for cheaper through Audible. So I generally buy them both together so that when I'm able to read my digital hard copy, I'm doing that. But audio books don't be in the car on the 20 minute drive in, 20 minute drive back. That's 40 minutes of listening right there. So I try to get it in when, whenever I can, man. And that that's what helps me to get through that book each week. It's not me having the candles out and playing uh, Miles Davis in the background. I got my highlighter and my book in front of me. No, there are going to be times where I'm I'm on the go and I'm listening to the audio book as I'm going. Now, I will pause if I hear a quote and I will write that quote in my notes app for transfer, transfer later. But besides that, like I'm using various audio features and visual features for me to be able to make it through that book. What about you? Do you do you prefer one another? So I, I two, two, three years ago, I started getting into audible books. So mm. here, here is here is what I'm uh, what I'm working through. And again, for those of you that are listening, the reason why we're having this discussion is to plant the seed for you to start thinking about this, for you to have a learning plan and a plan for how you're going to grow as a leader and as a person. That's the reason why we're having this discussion. So mm. um, I'm working through now um, how to find the balance with my, my physical copies, digital copies, audible copies, and when mm. I'm listening to podcasts and podcast series. Mm. Because... Yeah. Because podcasts are now very much a part of my rhythm and my routine. And mm -hmm. what I found like four years ago was when I really got into the podcast space, my reading went way down. Wow. And at one point wow. I found like, I'm like, I was frustrated with myself because I'm like, man, I'm, I'm not reading. But then I had to be realistic and say, but if you're learning, you're learning, you're not just learning from a book. Um. Because yeah. because the so like I'm not I'm not listening to podcasts or following podcasts that are like fluff podcasts. I'm I'm taking notes from them. They mm -hmm. you know they are heady podcasts. Um, I had my I had my youngest son uh, last year count how many podcasts I follow. Pastor John, I got seventy three podcasts that I'm following. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you serious right now? I am. I am. Oh, wow. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So when I was getting, when I, when I got my most recent DEI certification, man, I found like nine justice podcasts that I want to follow. I want to hear what people were saying. And I literally mm -hmm. just like overdosed on listening to those, like mm -hmm. literally just kind of like, let me, you know, so man, I think in a span of like two months, I might've listened to like 200 different episodes of justice conversations and just all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, did I read those books that they recommended and talked about? No, I didn't. But the, <laughs> the information was just so yeah. rich. So for me, I, I'm working through now just finding that balance and making sure that I have a healthy rhythm 
of the book, the physical book, the audio book, the digital book, and then the podcast learning. Because I enjoy podcasts. I'm at, at a space and I'm enjoying those. And I'm Bro, a I, so I, I have unsubscribed and subscribed from so many podcasts <laughs> over the past 12 months. It's sort of like you're trying to figure out if you want to date the person, right? So it's like, uh, I don't know if I want to listen to you every week or so. So maybe not. So I've, yeah. I've done that. So I got probably about eight solid ones that I listen to on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, most of them in, in the leadership space. But to your point, it, it takes away from my reading time because I read in the car via Audible. So I got to kind of make that decision whether or not I'm going to do it. Now, yeah. let me tell you a podcast that I'm, I'm loving right now. I know we're not yeah. talking about that. But the Bible Project podcast. So I'm not oh. following their podcast. I'm following their YouTube page. Oh, my goodness, bro. Listen, they just had an episode on trees in the Bible. Bro, it's over. Like, I never, you know, as a pastor, you're like, oh, yeah, I've heard a lot of this before, right? I've never heard some of some of this stuff and the connections with the Hebrew words and the tree um, throughout the Old Testament. And it blew my mind. You hear me? So Bible Project, even if you just go listen to the tree episode, the tree of life episode, that right there. Listen to me, so, so let me tell y'all what y'all just saw. Y'all just saw two nerds nerding out. That's what y'all just saw. <laughs> y'all just saw two nerds nerding out, right? Yeah. So, yep. so Pastor John, he he's identified, and and this what we're talking about here is is the law of priorities. John Maxwell's mm -hmm. law of priorities, law number seventeen from the twenty one mm -hmm. irrefutable laws of leadership, the law of priorities. Uh, and I only know that because we talked about that this morning. <laughs> was like, oh man, he's got all twenty-one. Oh, like, yeah, right, right. You got all them memorized. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> now I know them. I know all twenty-one, but I don't have them memorized mm -hmm. in order and the number and all that. But so in the law of priorities, what you do is you identify your core values. So in my case, everything that I'm doing centers around life, leadership, family, and marriage, and the church and ministry. Those four things. My podcast mm -hmm. is about that. Uh, how I'm spending my time is about that. My passions are about that. I get excited about that. What I'm reading yep. is about that. The podcast I follow centers around those four things. You know, uh, they interviewed Tiger Woods one time. And the interviewer, Pastor John, said, so, Tiger, what do you do for fun? Mm. Tiger's like, I play golf. <laughs> right. So, so Tiger, okay, cool. How do you relax? What do you do to relax? Tiger's like, I play golf. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I got it. What do you do in your downtime? I play golf. <laughs> That's it. No, to, to your point, though, like people ask me that same question. And you know what my response is? I read. Because I read all the time and it's enjoyable for me. And that's one of my core values is is learning and be in becoming a lifetime learner. I, and I keep it is, all... and it's our livelihood. It's our livelihood. Yeah. Yep. It is. It is. That's the way we live, man. We're knowledge workers. And we <laughs> gotta continue to uh seek knowledge and wisdom. So I, I I have the same thing, I have the same process. I also my to-do list is separated by those areas as well. Mm. So that I can see whether I am out of balance in one area. Yeah. Where I yeah. don't have items in an area. I'm like, okay, I need to add some things to my family list over here because there's some imbalance here with the ministry or with the leadership piece or with the blogging podcasting piece, right? Yeah. So so I make sure that there's an adequate balance to all my core areas. Now, obviously, there are going to be seasons of life where um, I'm, I'm busier in one area, but I want to make sure that, you know, over the course of the year that, that I have the adequate balance there. And and that's important for me as well. Yeah. So let's 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 just kind of really, really quickly review um, what we just talked about really fast, uh, because our man, our time is getting away from us. Man, I didn't know it's 46 after. That's crazy. 
man, we've been we've been we've been going in on it, brother. We, we have been, <laughs> I mean, in a, in a good way. I mean, this is this is stuff yeah. that we're uh, that we're passionate about, and uh, you know, want to make want to make uh, sure that people, you know, kind of think through these things and process these things in a way that is helpful. Uh, and, and that is, um, you know, that is useful for you. So let's, mm-hmm. let's, let's, let's take a step back. I'm giving you some very practical things uh, that you need to be thinking about because a part of this is about really your own personal development, you know, having a personal mm-hmm. development plan, a personal growth plan. So what, what, what are your core values? That's a question you need to be able to answer. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to put these, let me, let me back up for a second. I'm going to put these um, in, in on the screen for you. Um, what are your core values? All right. Mm-hmm. What are your core values? That's question number one. What are your core values? Okay. Uh, question number two. Question number two. Um, what books in those core values do you need to read? Now, here's what Pastor John is doing, and here's what I'm doing differently. So, Pastor John, he identifies his core values. And he goes ahead, he makes a list of the books. So he don't have to think about this week to week. He already knows what what 52 books he's reading for this year. In my case, I am breaking things down by quarter. So for this Mm -hmm. quarter, here are the things that I want to lean in on. Here's the things that I want to learn about. Okay. So I'm overdosing on, say, marriage stuff right now. Right. I'm overdosing Mm -hmm. on parenting stuff. I'm overdosing on leadership stuff. And I'm centering myself a little bit too because I'm in school as well right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what books do you need to read? And Pastor John, correct me if I'm wrong. Do you go ahead and you buy all of those books in advance or do you, you wait until you get to that? Well, I buy at least 12 at a time just so I can have them in my queue in my Kindle. So, so yeah, I have, I don't buy all of them though. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, what what podcast? I'm gonna throw that in there for, for your learning perspective. What podcast do you need to be listening to? Uh, mm-hmm. Now, obviously, the pandemic has pivoted this some, but I think a real question that you need to be asking yourself also is: What conferences or communities mm-hmm. do you need to be connected to? Now, here's a here's an important per, important word for you to write down. Whatever your areas of passion are, your priorities, your core values. You need to be researching where the ecosystems are for that, yeah. where the ecosystems are for that, because there's a there's if there's a tribe of people that's in that space, you at least need to know who those people are. And even if you don't know them personally, you need to be aware of the content that they're creating. OK, yeah, you, you can draw from those resources. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. And then then the final thing that I would say is just because of where we are on social media, you need to be following the content creators in those spaces around the passions that you've identified. You need mm-hmm. to follow me following the content creators. So Pastor John, we got like five minutes. Um, yeah. Let's let's pivot for just a quick second and let's talk about discipleship for a church. Um, mm-hmm. I recognize my target audience and I, I may have uh, a number of people listening to this who are pastors, ministry leaders, some who are passionate about discipleship, some are in Christian education, the whole nine yards. Let's let's talk about some quick ideas. And we talked about this a little bit before, but very specifically, let's talk about some very uh, strategic and intentional steps that churches need to be taking right now around helping people to become better disciples. So just share a couple of things really fast that that's top to mind for you. Yeah, I think churches need to be digitally evangelistic when it comes to discipleship. And I think that the come here model has been disrupted. And now as discipleship models, we have to be willing to go there. And I think that when we think through where there is, there is going to be in social media and Mm. in social media spaces. So our church has intentionally decided and, you know, Pastor Christopher, you know this, whatever you budget is what you value. Right. Mm -hmm. So if if you take a look at your budget, our budget will certainly know what it is that we value at our churches. And so we decided to intentionally put money towards our digital evangelism strategy and discipleship strategy. And we hired a full-time online campus pastor. It goes back Mm -hmm. to what you said before. This isn't just about launching services or online services and and streaming them. Your, Your tech team can do that. You need someone who is one, a digital native. Okay. Digital nativity means that they know social media well. 
and then two, that they are theologically inclined and or trained and or pliable enough for you to be able to help them to pastor, shepherd, and lead. So we were able to identify a person at our church who had those gifts. And now that person is now shepherding our online community through digital discipleship. I want you to keep going, but let me just do a quick plug here because I think an important point that you just made is that you guys didn't just find somebody that likes posting on social media. You found somebody that was qualified and gifted. Um, and I believe that, that so many times today in the church world, we, we have expectations where we put the wrong people in the wrong seats and don't mm -hmm. get the right results. And we think the issue is um, the platform or the medium. And that's not the issue. The issue is that the people you have assigned in that role are not doing what they're supposed to do because they're not called and passionate about that. So go ahead. Yeah. Shameless so, plug, yeah. firstchurchjobs.com. <laughs> this person has two master's degrees, one in homiletics and the other in pastoral counseling. So wow. they're certainly qualified. And they're also entrepreneur in, in social media. So so it was just kind of that, that unicorn role that we, we were able to carve out. But it's a necessary role. I, I, like you said, we put people in these social media positions just because they got a Facebook account. And then you figure out that they can't do the job <laughs> itself. Yeah. Um, so, so certainly that's important as well. So I think that one of the things that churches really got to think through over the next five years or so when it comes to learners is the disruption that has been created by this pandemic has led all of us to think more digitally. Hmm. And in an analog church world, thinking digitally has really caused many pastors to uh, to feel like they can't do it. Uh, many pa pastors have resigned because of uh, how things are going. But I see this as a God moment, a God opportunity for us to adjust and allow the same spirit that worked in your building hmm. to work over Wi-Fi. So, so, so I think it's. So I think that that's, that's one of the things that people really have to think through and think about is how is it that we're going to now approach this new uh, group of people who need to hear the gospel uh, in a space where they're never going to, they're never going to don the, the doors of your church. They're not going to come into your building. So yeah. now you have to, it becomes a go there issue. And that's, that's Matthew 28 all day. It's just yeah. that we have been doing the inverse of Matthew 28. And now uh, we're being forced to actually live out the Great Commission, <laughs> albeit digitally. So, so yeah, I think that's, that's that's what I would say. Yeah, it's not an either or. This is not an either or proposition. This is a both and. Yeah, it is. So everybody, listen. Um, here's how you can get in touch with Pastor John. Uh, that's his website right there. Uh, go and connect with him, and then of course uh, his social media is right underneath his name there in the bottom of the tile. So check check him out. I uh, want to invite you again. I mentioned this earlier, uh, founder and CEO. We're now in our second year of diversechurchjobs.com where we're helping churches to find qualified candidates of color uh, that are in ministry uh, and uh, opportunities to even help the church be healthier. So we're coming and coaching and coming alongside of churches. But just personally, you want to connect with me, that's my website there. And uh, also my social media um, is in the bottom of the tile there as well. So this is been in the middle of the day, and we recognize that probably many of you all will see this later on, but feel free to inbox us or reach out to us with any questions that you have. I know Pastor John is committed to churches being healthy. I'm committed to it. Um, and so if you're trying to build out your discipleship arm, uh, trying to help people learn and what uh, learn what it means to be a healthy disciple following Jesus Christ, uh, then feel free to ask the questions because we want to we want to help you be as healthy as you can be. So, Pastor John, any closing remarks, brother, before we end today? I want to plug a book because you cannot do any of this learning without creating good habits. And James Clear's Atomic Habits is an amazing book on setting habits, um, making sure those, ha those habits has, have what he calls cues um, to be able to move through um, that process. So I would, I would commend that book to anyone who is interested in trying to figure out how to have uh, set and uh, maintain good habits. I love it. So so while you plug the book, I'm going to plug my podcast because I had James Clear on my podcast two years ago. 
So if you're not following the Wise Idea Podcast, go follow the Wise Idea Podcast. You'll hear the interview with James Clear on it. Listen, Pastor Christopher, he's interviewed everybody on not that podcast. Not yet. I received that, but I'm I'm trying to get them. I'm tell every tell everybody that you know that's an influencer that has a book to reach out to me. We're gonna get them on the podcast. Come come too. Yeah. Okay. All right, y'all. This has been a fun discussion. So thank y'all so much for being on with us today. If you're not following us, uh, liking us and sharing the stuff that we're doing, go ahead and do that. And uh, this was on LinkedIn. This was on YouTube, and this was on Facebook today. So hopefully you've been you benefited from it and you've been blessed by it. And if we can help in any way, feel free to reach out. Have an amazing day, everybody. Peace.